My name is Leo Moore. I'm a partner in the technology team in William Fry with a specialism in IP technology and data protection matters. And Leo, what do you expect will happen with international data transfers in 2021? I think international data transfers has already generated a significant amount of attention in 2020. And I think this is going to continue and will evolve further in 2021. This is primarily as a result of the Court of Justice of the European Union decision in what people commonly know as the Schrems II case. And effectively, companies that wish to transfer information outside of the European economic area to countries such as the US, which is very prevalent from an Irish perspective, they will now face additional legal responsibilities. The Privacy Shield mechanism was struck down, closing off one route to data sharing with the US. And I suppose the other more common transfer route is the standard contractual clauses. That's coming more and more to the fore and will do through 2021. The standard contractual clauses were upheld by the Schrems II decision, but its application is much more tightly defined. So as a result, it will be necessary for companies to establish whether or not the jurisdiction to which they want to send personal data is deemed to be essentially equivalent to the data protection laws within the European Union. And that's no easy task. Uh, I think this will take up a lot of focus for companies in 2021. Equally, I think lawmakers in the US and the EU are going to try and come up with some legal solutions on how to facilitate international transfers and the free flow of data across borders. We're also then waiting on the outcome of Brexit discussions, and this could have uh, an impact um, on the data protection space quite uh, specifically. The question as to whether or not the UK is deemed adequate, which we'll, we may find out more about in the next literally hours and days, will be critical to how many companies uh, use front office or back office operations or services in the UK. If the UK is not deemed adequate next year, it will make the transfer of information to and from the UK much more burdensome for companies also. Um, I think companies are going to have to therefore assess their arrangements with the UK and may need to put in place new mechanisms for data transfers as well. Perfect. And there are also new rules on copyright and online platforms to you next year. What are they and how will they impact some of the major tech companies here in Ireland? Yeah, that, that's definitely um, an area for reform next year. We're going to see significant changes in the online environment. Uh, this is primarily driven by the European Union's digital single market, which many of you may have heard about. This, the, this strategy is, is one that involves introduction of new copyright legislation, reforms, to the rights and the obligations of platform providers and content creators themselves. And there will be additional protections for European consumers as a result of the strategy. Those with significant online presence, like a lot of the big tech in, in Ireland, have already been very proactive in preparing for the changes that will come into force in 2021. But many other companies have yet to really assess how these laws will impact them. Ireland is up against a tight deadline in 2021 to implement the, the new copyright legislation. And there are two key changes from that copyright legislation uh, that will have a significant impact on the aggregation service providers such as Google, uh, press publications like newspapers, and then thirdly, content creators. Press publications will have the right to restrict the use of their materials and require aggregators to seek a license for the reproduction of their content. So that means Google and others will have to approach publications for, to, to get a license to reproduce that content. And then authors will also be entitled to additional remuneration that they weren't necessarily entitled to to date. So we'll also see these changes affecting online content sharing providers as they're defined. Uh, these are those entities that provide access to user generated content. So YouTube is a very good example as, as is Facebook. And those companies, in addition to getting licenses for the content that they want to reproduce, they will also be liable for the content or for the copyright infringing materials, I suppose, that may be posted to their sites by users in ways that they weren't liable to date. So it's clear that I think that these reforms are really gonna have a significant impact on companies operating in and over the, over the internet who reproduce third party materials. And then it will also impact positively, I think, on those that produce original content. And can we expect more enforcement activity from the Irish Data Protection Commission in 2021 following up on current investigations? The issue of fines by the Irish Data Protection Commissioner is really coming later than expected. And I think the reason for that is the complexities that there are with regard to the mechanism 
to get EU-wide approval for the decision and any associated fines. And that's really been why there's been a delay in, the, in those decisions to, to now. But as sure as you know, one comes along, another sure to follow swiftly behind. And in that regard, we understand that another decision on a fine is imminent also, perhaps um, in January of next year of 2021. We're also seeing a significant increase in data protection litigation by individuals who are taking action for material, which is like a financial loss, or even non-material uh, losses, so non-financial losses, so stress-type claims. I think this means that companies that uh, will be the subject of these kinds of claims will need to be aware that they can be directly sued by individuals if they fail to, uh, if the companies fail to protect the rights of individuals or maybe even suffers a data security breach. Um, these are areas of significant concern for companies uh, already. Uh, we're definitely seeing an increase in that, but I feel that this trend of private data protection litigation will become increasingly common in 2021, meaning that tight and more appropriate data protection regulation within organizations will be necessary in order to fend off or defend against such uh, litigation. Finally, 2020 has been the year of working from home. What impacts do you expect to see from this shift in the next year? But well, I think we're definitely going to see a further increase in digitalization. Digitalization has been on the cards for many years, but there's definitely been an increase this year. And I think that will continue across sectors into 2021, which basically means that uh, most companies will need good quality connectivity. There will be an increased reliance on traditional and new technologies um, to facilitate ongoing productivity of businesses. I think for employers working from home, will definitely come with additional complexity from a legal perspective. It's clear that cybersecurity risks, cyber threats, they have been significantly increased in the last year. And I think this in turn then gives rise to an obligation of companies to really update their data protection policies and procedures, their cybersecurity technologies that they will implement into their systems, and then to ensure that there's appropriate training for staff. We're also seeing new data processing activities occur in businesses as a result of this new norm. Um, for example, you know, staff are in some instances working not just from home in Ireland, but also from their home in Europe and maybe even further field uh, throughout the, the world. This is an impact not only on international data transfer issues that I've already discussed, but actually also from a tax perspective. And one you know, thing we've seen quite prevalent in the market is Google calling on all, all staff to return to Ireland not necessarily to the Google offices around Dublin, but really uh, this being a big concern from a, a tax implications perspective uh, where, where, where staff were working remotely in other countries and may have created establishment issues from a tax perspective for, for the likes of Google and other similar companies. There are lots of other legal issues relating to working from home uh, that companies will also now need to deal with. So there's existing health and safety and employment law issues uh, but these need to be applied in the context of the working from home environment where the, the staff are not necessarily on prem um, in the in the office. And I think therefore it's clear that these issues will will be issues that companies will have to grapple with throughout 2021. Perfect. Thank you very much, Leo. You're more than welcome.